Kakulkin. We haven't seen much wind of this guy in a while. Let's see what I did there. Yeah, okay. I know. Very bad joke. But that's why I love it. Anyway, today we're going to talk about Kakulkin. Book of Thoth and why he's going to be a really good mage in the current meta. First up, though, let's talk Book of Thoth. Previously, Book of Thoth was 2,650 gold. It gave you 100 power, 125 mana, and 15 MP5, which means you regenerate 50 mana per 5 seconds. To put it simply, 15 MP5 means you'll get back 3 mana per second. That means in 1 minute you'll regenerate 180 mana. Passive on this item requires stacks. Per stack, you can gain 10 mana per stack and receive 5 stack per god kill and 1 stack per minion kill. This does work on camps as well. This stacks up to 75 times, and when it's fully stacked, it grants you a total of 875 mana on top of your god's normal base. That's not all though, it's also provided 3% conversion of mana as power. For example, if you had 1200 mana, you would gain 26 magical power. Here's what changed. In patch 513, Book of Thoth had a price increase to 2,850 gold. It offers 80 power, 250 mana, and still the same 15 MP5, and the conversion was increased from 3% to 5%. We will use the same example here. If you had 1200 mana, you would gain 60 magical power. So with the Book of Thoth changes, when it's fully stacked, it offers you 130 magical power, 1000 mana, and of course the same MP5, but it still stacks the same way. That's to be compared to the old Book of Thoth, which gave you 126. So you actually gain 4 power right off the bat. Now let's talk about the build. Book of Thoth, Shoes of Focus, Spear of the Magus, Book of the Dead, Ponomicon, Spear of Desolation. This build will give you 75 platinum from Spear of the Magus on your third ability, which does damage over time for 8 ticks. It can be up to another 4 or 5 ticks if they reset to the middle of the tornado, but either way. Um, this also gives you just little 15 flat pin from Desolation. You also have 20% CDR, which is all you need, but four of these items have mana on them. Specifically, four of these items give you an additional 1,750 mana on top of your current mana point. So let's say you are playing Kulkin, who already has a passive that converts your mana pool as magical power by 5% as well. Combine this with Book of Thoth, and that's a 10% conversion. The total mana that you will have at level 20 with this build is 2,915. Remember, 10% of the mana pool between Book of Thoth and Kulkin's passive will be converted to magical power. This means you'll be gaining an additional 145 magical power with this build. The Pokemon's total magical power would become 767. That does not include red buff, that does not include a power pot. That's just straight up with the build. Why is this such a big deal? Because the scalings make his damage outright ridiculous. His first ability, Zephyr, does 240 damage plus 75% of your magical power. Um, this also has a slow on the ability. The third ability, Whirlwind, as we said earlier, ticks 8 times over 4 seconds. It does 50 damage per tick, plus 15% per tick. Basically, over 8 ticks, this would do 400 damage plus 100%, 120% scaling. And now for his ultimate, Spirit of the Nine Winds, this, this ability deals 800 damage plus 120% magical scaling. But let's put these numbers into, into perspective. Let's talk about the raw damage per ability. This means we're going to assume you deal damage to a target that will have zero protections. His one Zephyr will deal 1,002 damage. It's also on a pretty short cooldown. It's either six or seven seconds with a spill, something like that. The three will deal 1,362 damage over time, and his ultimate will deal 1,762 damage. Now remember, this is assuming they have their protections, or you've already shredded through their protections, and you're hitting for the full amount that you can hit them for. But what really makes this a good deal for Krakulkin? First of all, the build has up to 767 power as much as before. Second, this build provides a crazy amount of mana sustain. Third, it also provides up to 105 flat penetration, which will allow you to do two damage to twisties and a lot of damage to takes that you normally couldn't do. This also provides 20% CDR when he already has low enough cooldowns. And it also gives you a little bit of life steal, 12% to be exact, from the Polynomicon. Focus on your abilities and your basic attacks. 
and once you're below 40% of your health threshold, you gain a health shield equal to 20% of your mana pool. In this build, it will give you 383 points as health in a shield. Speaking of low cooldowns, let's bring those up with this build. The 20% CDR will give you cooldowns as follows. Zephyr, 5.6 seconds. Whirlwind, 8.8 .8 seconds. Spirit of the Nine Winds, 56 seconds. It's pretty nice. But that's it for the Kakulkan build. Also wanted to mention, if Kakulkan becomes meta, expect to see a lot of Scylla as well. They're both late game gods, and that's usually what we'll see. But that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned a bit. Logic the ship